This Plinko feature video will cover query extensions. Query extensions are a series of extension methods added to the iQueryables of business entities generated by Plinko, designed to make querying your data easier and more logical. So let's begin. First of all, in this video, we'll be using the latest tracker sample application, which can be downloaded from codesmith.googlecode.com. So the first thing I want to point out is that in the tracker.core, there's a data folder in which is located the CSP, and inside of that is the queries CST. Now that template is going to be generating the queries folder as well as all the query extensions for this project. Now we're going to come back and look at these user extensions later, we're going to customize them, but I just want to point out for now that this is here so you know where these query extensions are coming from in Plinko. So let's go down and look at the video test file, which I have open right here. This is a simple unit test file that we're going to go through and look at each test showing one feature one at a time. So the first feature we're going to look at is the difference between get and buy queries. Um, Plinko generates these two different types of queries. Plinko is going to generate a buy query for every column in every table in the database, and it's going to generate a get query for every unique result in the database, or a uniquely constrained column in the database. So the primary difference here is that the get queries are going to materialize a result immediately because it's going to be getting by a unique parameter, versus the buys are going to be returning iQueryables and thus be chainable together. So if we go ahead and run this test, we can see that our assert succeeded. Uh, task A and task B have the same ID because they're the same row returned, one of which did a get and returned an immediate result, and the other did a by ID, getting back an iQueryable, which it then did a dot first against. Same thing with below, we don't only do this against um, primary keys, any unique constraint in the database generates a get, so we can do the user dot get by email address, which will return the same result as just doing the by email address with calling first at the end of it. So the difference between a get and a buy is a relatively simple thing. Now let's actually look at the simple part of the buy queries and then we'll move on to some of their more advanced features. So as I mentioned, every single column in the database is generates a buy query. So the user is going to have by first name, by last name, etc. Tasks are going to have by summary, by description, by create date, and so on. And here we're just going to do a by first name of William, so that's saying where that column has a value equal to William. And the same thing with summary, we're going to do by summary and we're going to give it a value. Now these results are returning iQueryable, so anything you can do with that query um, you can still do with this. So we're going to do a first default on one, and we're going to do a two list on the other. So let's go ahead and run this with the debugger. And notice we got back our William record, first or default, and we got back our list where the summary of the task is make it to earth, at which point we got one result back. So the query extensions are simple enough on their own, but their real strength comes in when we use some of their overload methods, and then eventually we'll chain them together. So the first overload we're going to look at is the by params here. And every single query extension can take in multiple params of its type. So, and that will generate an or statement as opposed to an and statement. So here we're doing by first name where the name is equal to Kara or Lee. And then down here we're doing something a little more complicated. Assign ID is a nullable int. So we're going to pass in where it is null or equal to one. And again, while any particular row would generate an and, these overloaded params are going to generate an or. So let's go ahead and run that. And we'll see that we got back two users, and we got back both Kara and Lee, because that's where the first names were equal to Kara and Lee. And then we got back a list of assign IDs, which, I'm sorry, a list of tasks where the assign IDs were null or one. And the first result here, it is one, and in the second result, it is null. So, passing in uh, the overloaded operator of a series of params will generate an OR statement for each by query. The next overload we're going to look at is using custom comparators, and these allow us to do something that's more complicated than just an equal statement. Up until now, we've passed in a, ver a value into a by query, and we have tried to know where it was equal. Now we can pass in a containment operator enum or a comparison operator enum value, and they're going to do different things. So here we're going to get by the email address, but we're going to say where the string value starts with Gaius. And here we're going to say by completed date, um, and we're going to pass in date time dot now and a comparison operator of greater than. So this is going to return to us when now is greater than the completed date you know, of a task. So again, this is allowing us to do something more complicated than just an equal. And all of our asserts have succeeded. We got back a list of, well, I said tasks here, but it was actually users. And that brought us back 
Gaius Baltar, and then only one task has actually been completed in the database, but uh, now was greater than the time it was completed, so that record got returned to us as well. So custom comparators, again, allowing us to do something other than just equals. And the last, but certainly not the least of the overloads, is the ability to pass in an ienumerable set of data into a byqueryable extension. So here we're going to query by ID, and we're going to pass in this raw array of integers, thus creating an OR statement where the ID is equal to 1, 2, or 3. This particular example is rather simple, but you can see that this would have um, this would have a much better application or use when passing in dynamic lists from your application for your queries. So here, of course, we get back three users, and sure enough, the IDs are 1, 2, or 3. So now that we've looked at all these independently, we're going to go ahead and look at the real strength of Plinko's query extensions by chaining them together. So in this unit test, we're going to get a user. We're going to say where the first name is equal to Lee or William. We're going to get them where the last name is equal to Adama. They are approved, and their email address ends with at battlestar.com. So this list should return to us two records because this should match both Lee and William. And again, we're using all of our different overloads here. We're going to get where the first name is an OR statement, and then we're going to do the AND statements on last name and is approved an email address, but that email address comparator is going to be an ENDS WITH rather than equals. And sure enough, our unit test succeeded. Give us back two records, including William Adama, where the first name was William, and Lee Adama, where the first name was Lee. And again, all their other criteria was met with an AND. So I believe this is a great example of what the query extensions were designed to do, which is make your logic very easy to write and um, very intuitive and easy to read for when people come back to look at it. Uh, there's no question as to what this query is getting. So now let's go over some uh, slightly more advanced features. Particularly, we're going to look at two things. We're going to look at the two-paged list as well as the dynamic link where statement. So with the two-page list, this will take care of paging any of your data results. You're going to pass in two parameters, that is a page index, and that starts with zero, and a page size. So it'll page your data, give you back the particular page you wanted, as well as a series of other properties regarding the paged information. But we'll look at that when we actually run it. Um, down here, we're going to pass in a string, and then Plinko is going to dynamically parse that string and turn it into a query for you. So let's go ahead and run these. And we notice that, again, these have succeeded, and our page list came back where the first result um, in the page list was Lee. And the total number of items is six, but if we actually take a look at page list, there's a lot more information than just the three records that came back. Um, has next page, false, has previous page, is first page, last page, all the counts and indexes and sizes, etc. So a lot of very useful information for your paging mechanism to use. And this information is accurate. We brought back the second page with a set of three. So if we look at our SQL Server, we'll notice there are six, six records, and if you were taking three in a set, the second set would come back with these three records, and that would start, indeed, with Lee Adama. So that brought us back an accurate page list with very little effort. And down here, the dynamically created query from the dynamic link library, which, by the way, you have to include the namespace of codesmith.data.link.dynamic to use, parsed this out and returned to us a user collection with one result, and that result was indeed William Adama. So the last thing we're going to look at here is how to create a custom extension. So really this is as simple as creating a query extension, but notice that there is no full name column on the user table, so what we have done here is created a query extension. We have placed this inside of our user ex user extensions file, and this is the front file, so it will not be regenerated when Plinko regenerates, thus it will persist your custom changes. Now I've done some very simple logic here with splitting a full name, and all I'm doing is seeing if the first name matches the first param passed in, and the last name matches the second part of the string. But I did this using, A, I've reused an existing extension method, as well as just used a where statement, so showing that you can write these in any way you want, but that includes reuse. So if we go back to our test and we pass in William Adama, our custom extension should return to us one user whose first name is William, last name Adama. And sure enough, it does. So very simple to add these query, custom query extensions with however much logic you want. You can reuse the existing ones, and you can put it in a safe location that will not get destroyed on regeneration. That concludes this video on query extensions. We hope you found it helpful and informative. For more videos, please visit us at Plinko.com. My name is Tom DuPont. Thank you for using Plinko.